Hey, welcome along to this Excel video. I haven't done one for a while. Sorry, the Olympics has uh, had me working flat out. So uh, here's my first video for a while. We're going to be looking at some conditional formatting using some formulas. So to set the set the scene, really, I've got uh, some test data. There are sort of eight or nine different tests that we have completed and have got some data for. There are six players with some uh, numbers in there. And what you find with the test data is that typically you have two categories. One is that a higher score is better, such as in a yo-yo test or a strength test. And other times a low score is better, typically when it involves uh, a time, such as a speed related test or a skin fold test, body fat and so on. So what the problem with that is, is when you are doing conditional formatting, you can't necessarily set it up to be completely flexible. So normally these two tables that you're looking at would be on another page. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a little dashboard and it looks a little bit ugly because I've got a whole lot of formulas visible so that you can have a look at them. So what I want to be able to do is allow the person looking at this test data to just select the test that they want to look at. So I'm going to allow them to do five. I'm going to do a little bit of data validation. Because everything's on the same page, I don't need to be using defined names. So I'm just going to simply select our list of tests there. And so what that allows us to do is just go along the top here and pick some tests that we might want to present in a little dashboard. Alright, the next thing I want to do is to be able to pull across from this table here, which is our data table. Like I said, this would normally be on another page and, and would probably have a whole lot more players in there, but uh, it works for now. I want to be able to pull in the data from that table into this dashboard depending on what option is selected. So there's a couple of ways you can do it. They're really the same way but uh, using two different functions. The first one is is going to be a VLOOKUP and I've written them both down below here in case you're interested. I'll do an index actually. Index is probably the more uh, correct way to do it. So when you do index you say where is your array? Well there it is there. That's my data table. Lock that down. What row number from the data table do I want to pull out? Well, I want to do a match here. I want to pull out the right player. And I'll just lock down the first part of that, the column and not the row. I want to look it up in this array. And you'll note that I selected the blank cell at the top. That's because I want the match to pull out the exact number, which is, in this case, number 2. Um, sometimes I might just select the actual players and put a plus 1 on the end to get the row number, but this was a little bit more correct. So, And I want to do the same thing for the column number. I want to match yo-yo. This time I lock down the row number the array that I want to match it in, including that blank cell, is there. And that's pretty much it. So an index with a double lookup, one for the row, one for the column, and it should give us what we want. I'm just going to drag that down to see if I got it right. So far, so good. And if I drag it across, it should also tell me what I want. Yep, great, that looks, is looking good now. Um, what I can do just to make sure it's all working as it should is change a couple of these things. And yes, everything corrects itself. I could also change the player there and see if that changes. And yes, it does. All right, so we're looking good. Now, to be able to make conditional formatting work using formulas, um, Basically what I'm trying to do, and I'll just scroll across to the right here, any result which is world class, 
as defined by being greater than or equal to this score, I need to highlight a certain colour. Anything that is less than that value but greater than or equal to this value is showing up as development and anything that is less than this development value is showing up as, as being a, you know, a red alert if you like, needing some, some attention. So I need to be able to write some conditional formatting that allows um, flexibility so that when I change the test in this first column that the conditional formatting rules change. And how I've uh, done this in the past is that I simply put some values, um, be it in amongst the table like I'm going to do in this example or on another, another sheet or hidden somewhere and that allows those those values to be modified every time I change a different uh, drop down box and still allows the conditional formatting to work. So the first thing I want to do is I want to identify whether it is a, a high or a low test and what I mean by that is is high better or low better and I've got that in a little table across here. So I'm just going to go equals V lookup. What do I want to look up? I'm going to look up that. Lock down the row. Where do I want to look it up? I want to look it up over here. And I want to put in whatever's in column two. So if I drag this across, that should change. Looking good. Okay, so we've got two highs and three lows. Now that I've got that, I also want to pull across what the world class and what the development score is for each of these particular tests. So, same as before, I want to look up whatever item has been selected in row two. I want to look it up over here in this particular table. In this case, I want whatever's in column three. Drag that across. And if I pull that down, edit that to number four, that should pull across the development result. Okay, so we're looking good. We've got um, an indication of whether the test is higher or low and we've got the world class and development scores in there. So now we can get about putting in the um, appropriate conditional formatting. And so I've got the, we have to put six rules in place. If we put these six rules in place, that means regardless of what's selected up the top, the conditional formatting colors will correctly identify where a score is. And uh, the six rules are basically that um, there are three categories. Something that needs work is development or world class, and you have to do that for both the high and the low types of test. You can put in a seventh type of conditional formatting, which is in case there's an error. For example, if we deleted that, there's suddenly all these errors. And that's always good to do for completeness. So we'll put all seven in now. So the first thing I want to do is select the data table go up to conditional formatting, say new rule, I'll pull this to the side so we can see the formula that I've used, click on use a formula to determine which cells to format and I'm going to start typing it. So the way conditional formatting works is that it will apply the formatting as long as all the conditions are true. So we want to say that as long as the cell and we have to, this is the selected cell, B3, so everything will be uh, in with regards to B3. So as long as it's a number, then if it's a number, then the other rules can actually apply. We want to say that when it's a high test, then a score being above the world class value is good. When it's a low test, the, the converse is, is the case, so we, we do have to make that distinction. So I'll just type this in and then we can just go through it. 
So only if these three values are true, it's a number, the option in row B9 says H, and the value itself is greater than or equal to our world, cl world class performance score. If I put a format of, let's be cliched here and do gold, then when I set OK, what it will show us, and we can validate this pretty quickly by looking at the uh, individual data here, that anything that's above the world class score is highlighted gold, and that's happened. All right, so I'm going to apply the next one. And what the next one will be is I'll actually do anything that needs work now because that's a, a slightly easier one to do. So it's a number. It's a high score. And it is less than the development score, which is to be found in B11. So if all of those things are true, we're going to make it red. It's a number, it's a high score, and it is less than the score of the development standard. So if I click OK, a couple of scores go red, and we can once again do a quick little check and see what's going on with that. And that looks right. Okay, so we've got one more to go to complete the high score tests. Now this one's a little bit more complicated because it has to have four criteria, simply because it has to be greater than um, the development standard but less than the world class standard. So you can do most of this with a cut and paste, but I'm just doing it manually just to illustrate the situation. So it is less than the world class score, but it is greater than or equal to the development score. And I'm just going to choose uh, a green for that particular one. Quick little check, that looks OK, and hit OK. So what we'll find here is because I've got two high scores, if I pick another one up here, let's uh, pick another one here, counter movement jump. As you can see, those criteria immediately apply themselves. So I'm, I'm not going to do the other ones. Um, I'm just going to pause the video and do that. So I've just quickly done those same three formulas for the low scoring tests. And the last one that I mentioned that I was going to do is just to make sure it's an error. So you don't have to do a formula this time, although you can. Format only cells that contain errors. And what I typically do is something fairly simple, and that's just make the font white. And so that uh, if there's an error, nothing shows up. These things show up as errors, but like I mentioned, I typically put them somewhere else anyway, those particular cells. So what we've got here, and I'll just tidy this up uh, a little bit. So we've got a little dashboard that allows <coughs> a coach or, or a fitness trainer, for example, to not show every single test result in a report. If, a, if an athlete's always getting a good score in a yo-yo test, you often don't need to, to show it. It's just not that worthwhile. So you pick the tests that are relevant. 5 meter, 10 meter, max speed, counter movement jump, mid thigh pull, so a real strength power combo there. And all the conditional formatting automatically applies and identifies what stuff is um, world class development or otherwise and uh, it's a nice way to, to make things leap out. Conditional formatting is very useful for that. 
but what the value of doing these high and low triggers and having the data in here is that regardless of what you choose, those conditional formatting colours work out correctly. So thanks for coming again. It's been a while. Um, sorry about that. If you want to copy the spreadsheet, uh, let me know, or uh, stop by at my website, which you'll see on the screen in a second. But uh, hope to see you again soon.